So it's uh, all for play for still. I think so. Do you want to bet against us? Morning, everybody, and welcome to For the Love of Pomegranate podcast with a breaking podcast, I suppose you could call it, because it is official. Philip Coutinho is now an Aston Villa football player, and uh, I'm bloody delighted. And it's it's the world comes at you fast, Paddy, doesn't it? The world comes at you really, really quickly because it seems like it was only two days ago that we were doing a Brentford review, and I was saying that oh, I can't see this happening, and then. Uh, literally on the same day after I'd spoken to a couple of people, I messaged you and I said, this is 99% happening. So, <laughs> you know, it's mad how, how quickly things change in, change in football. And it's, um, uh, look, I, I, I suppose I've already, I've, I've done a video as well. And if you guys haven't caught it, uh, I've done a video on the pros um, of Philip Coutinho, how he fits into the team. Um, what his statistical output is over the last 365 days, how he compares and how he can work with Demi Bundia. So if you haven't checked that out, I'm going to try and link it here in the um, in the video as well. I would love if you could check that out too. But Paddy, arguably, and I'm going to say arguably, the most high-profile signing Aston Villa have ever made. Um, I, I wouldn't argue with it. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's only on loan, I know a lot of people say, "Oh, it's a loan transfer; it's not really a transfer, or whatever." Like, but but you know, this this like, is up there with Juni with with the failed Juninho signing of Doug Ellis's term back in nineteen ninety six. Yeah. You know, well, I, I I I would put it up as the most exciting signing we've ever done. I would go as far as saying that this is our Rubinho moment. Remember when Rubinho came in and changed Manchester City and changed their their uh, their outlook on everything. This is our Rubinho moment. This is the moment, our chance to shine, our chance to spend money, our chance to attract the best there is. We have the money. We have the manager in place now who everybody believes will be enough to, to take us forward. Now we have made a huge statement of intent and we've signed, you know, did this guy really lit up the Premier League when he was there. He knows what it's all about. And with a run in the team, this guy is going to be absolutely huge for Aston Villa Football Club. And I am over the moon. Even if my face doesn't tell, I am absolutely over the moon. Well, and you likened him to Rubinho. I'll go, I, I, I'll i probably, because this is something that, that, that we spoke about and I actually messaged you. Like, we were on par with Spurs for quite a while. All right. And we were, and then Spurs all of a sudden, they, they signed Edgar Davids out of nowhere. And that was fine. He was on the, the downslope of his career, but it was kind of a stand up and take notice. And then that allowed them to sign players like they went on and, and, and they really fortified their midfield. They signed Modric for about 16 million, I think, from, from Dynamo, uh, Dynamo um, Zagreb. And then on the back of that, the year afterwards, they signed Raphael van der Vaart. And that was really, that really clicked with Bale becoming a superstar as well but i think that signing of rafael van der vaart was really kind of the watershed line for for um for for spurs it allowed them then to you know to to push on the transfer market like you look at their team you go back you look at spurs team in 2010 2011 2012 it's very much like ours it's littered with some good players some names that you will remember and you will know of but the squad isn't very much padded out then they've got Modric, van der vaart and up front i think they had people like pavlichenko and um, Robbie Keane. Robbie Keane wasn't even there at that time. I don't know. In 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 ten and eleven, but you know they had some. They Defoe, I mm. think Crouch, Pavlichenko, those guys up front. And you know what? What I'm trying to say is that sometimes you just need that name to come in that will kind of like spark off something. Now, Rafael van der Vaart was supremely good at Spurs as well. So oh, let's yeah. not take away yeah. that. So we need Coutinho to be really good to build upon that. But I absolutely agree with you. I think like we will be bar Erling Haaland goes somewhere today. I think we will be plastered over absolutely every television station oh, course, yeah. um yeah. in the Northern Hemisphere and probably in the Southern Hemisphere as well mm. as, uh, over the course of today. And, so. and let's face it, most most clubs in England now are are preparing for an FA Cup game this weekend. Exactly. They're, they're, they're not doing any business today, I would imagine. We don't play till Monday. Unless Man United go and sign somebody extraordinary, I don't envisage anything going to happen that's going to trump this news today. And, you know, 
as much as I mentioned it was a Rabinho one I knew you were going to mention Van der Vaart it's it this today is all about Aston Villa Football Club because yes. this, to me this is a watershed moment in the club's history I think this is the day we push on I think this is the day the owners that show show us that they're willing to take a punt you know I I know it's only what is a six month loan or whatever it is but we'll uh We'll uh, we'll we'll take it and we'll uh, we'll push on from here and we'll see who else we can attract. I just deleted something there off my phone as I was trying to search for stuff and I didn't want to delete it because I had a great point and I won't be able to find it again. So that's why I was popping, putting my head in my hand. But listen, you never know. This could be completely gazumped by Ashley Maitland going on loan to Roma um, or something over the, over the, the next few hours. And then before you know, uh, this will all be forgotten about. Um, I just, and you know what? I if, just, if, you've I just, if you've forgotten about it, I'm quite happy with that. Flying under the, we'll fly under the radar just nicely as well. So it did like this is an absolutely monumental moment, and if we fly under the radar, so be it. As long as we're pushing up that table and attracting this kind of player, this is a huge day for the club, and that is the most important thing today. And forget about everybody else. This this is Villa's moment. This is Villa's day, and it's you know it's the start. It's not the finish. That's it, exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, he, he he's got he's got to build on this now. He's got to he's got to bring in. If it's more mates, bring in more mates. I don't care who he brings in, but he's bringing in players of this ilk. Keep it going because this is magic. Yeah, let's look. I, I'm all for bringing in Luis Suarez now on top of this um, <laughs> and just and, and just trying to rekindle it. And look, if, if Steven Gerrard wants to throw on the boots again, give him, he's got, what, we'll give him the FA Cup off on Monday. Then after that, he's got, what, 10 days to, to, to get ready before United, uh, before United at home. So if he can't get fit in 10 days, then... Um, what's it all about anyway um but no as i said this is this is a good starting point um it's it's a big stand up and take notice moment you know like it's arguable we could say about that about leon bailey during the summer as well like nobody would have believed Aston villa could have uh enticed leon bailey to come to the mm. club yes we haven't seen the best of him what's going to happen to him now is going to be another question but look options are something that we cried out for we've been speaking about this options 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 yeah. If I was a betting man, I'd expect to potentially see maybe one of our overinflated, uh, like we've got an inflated uh, attacking midfielder slash winger room at the moment. Potentially, I would say over the next few days, we might see one of those, if not two of those, move out, um, whether it be on loan, permanent transfers, whatever. I'd say something quick might happen, might might happen there, just from the point of view of that, you know, that what I'm trying to count here about eight into two doesn't go. You know, so it's uh, and while we do want options, um, obviously there's going to have to be a bit of book balancing that goes on somewhere along here because mm. uh, while we do have rich owners, obviously there's there's the financial side of things as well. Uh, we don't know what the what, I suppose what really what the terms of the deal are yet. It's been speculated that it, uh, that it's a loan with potential to buy. Um, but I suppose once all that comes out in the wash, uh, we'll we'll speak about this more because this won't be the last podcast we'll have on Philip Coutinho. I would say over the next few days, I've one so. or two, no. I've one or two people lined up to speak about Philip Coutinho. And uh, listen, I'm going to revel in this because uh, it's uh, it's it's marquee news. Like we've we've all talked about wanting a marquee signing for Aston Villa for years and years and years. I really, I'm really happy with this. Do I feel that it's the, an area of need within the team? You and you and you could. Uh, both both uh, both opinions can be right. It's not an area of need within the team. Well, it is. It's always going to be when you can get someone like Philip Coutinho because we're upgrading. But if you were to say to me, gun to your head, you can only buy one player and one player only, I would have said defensive midfielder. I actually still want one. I want one more now that we've signed Philip Coutinho. And I think I, I think it will still come more. Yeah, but ha having the likes of uh, playmakers like Buendia and, and Coutinho in your team. Takes an awful lot of pressure off those defensive midfielders and pushes pushes uh, um, other midfields back an awful lot. There's going to be an awful lot of worry about coming up against uh, against Aston Villa. And and you know what? I hope he's fit enough to go in there Monday night and, and actually destroy Man United because that would just make it even better. Absolutely. That would be great. And look, as I say, he's an ex-Liverpool player, so I'm sure that he still has, uh, has, has that at heart. Just before we go, guys, um, as I say, I'm just going to share up a small tab here. I mentioned at the start that we do have a full video on Philip Coutinho, how he fits into the Aston Villa team. I'm um, just going to share up a little slide from that as well. You know, people say he's a busted flush, that he hasn't really done anything at Barcelona or at Bayern Munich over the last couple of years. Yes, this, this is based on 365 days of data um, from various different sites. We can see that he is in the top echelon, the top percentile for his technical ability and what he 
does, he does really, really well. You're not going to get the defensive side of things out of it. I'm not going to rehash the video I did. Please go find it, click on it. Um, it's one I really enjoyed doing. I put a lot of work into it. I'd really appreciate it. If you could give it a thumbs up and maybe share it around the place, I'd really appreciate that as well. But Philip Coutinho will now be swapping the red and royal blue of Barcelona for the claret and blue of a much more better historic Potentially well well run team in Aston Villa Football Club. Um, Wealthier team which, anyway. Uh, yeah, well, well, I suppose. Uh, although I do, I will say I do like the way that Barcelona. I do like the way the fans do have a massive controlling interest in Barcelona. But that's for another complete another pod, podcast as well. Um, on that. So, uh, everybody, very very quick one. Uh, Philip Coutinho, more is going to come out in the wash about what the actual deal is on this. And uh, look, I suppose, revel in it. Uh, be proud to be an Aston Villa fan today. Let's look forward to see what he brings. We won't see him until Man, Man United at home in the cup, in the league, should I say. Um, I'd imagine he's not going to be registered for the cup. Maybe he is. I don't know. But I'd imagine he won't be. Um, and yeah, this is going to put a smile on a lot of people's faces for the coming uh, weekend as well. So we're going to leave it at that. As I say, keep an eye out for that for more videos on this. I'm hoping to have more up during the course of the weekend. I do have a video ready to go on Aaron Hickey, which was going to drop at what day are we today? It was going to drop at nine o'clock on, on on Friday uh, morning, but it's not going to now because. Um, uh, Philip Coutinho will trump that. So that's going to be out in the morning. Also have a video done on Oriel Romeo, uh, which is really rather interesting. I thought it was really interesting. Anyway, some of the statistical analysis that brought that up. And uh, we'll be talking to a couple of um, familiar faces and familiar heads that you guys might know as well about Philip Coutinho over the coming days. So thanks very much, everybody, for what you do for the podcast. Give us a like, give us a share, give us a subscription. And we will be back with wall-to-wall coverage of uh, Philip. Well, as much as time allows for coverage of Philip Coutinho over the the next few days um that's it paddy anything else to talk about on the on this all good this watershed, watershed day in our club time to push on now and and forget about the badness don't look back in anger it's all good don't look back in anger yeah and spare a thought for tony jack because this is what he wanted but he couldn't <laughs> uh, he couldn't deliver it only joking anyway don't want to bring it down thanks very much everybody for listening great day for aston villa football club all that's left to say is up the villa up the villa Thank you.